Why? Why do some of you resist the scriptural truth of once saved, always saved, today? There are many culprits to this. Many, many culprits. But the main culprit to this idea, this notion, that today there is no eternal security comes from one source. Yea, hath God said from Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism. I'm going to read something to you from the Roman Catholic Catechism. <laughs> Check this out. See that? Isn't that lovely? Okay? Um, incidentally, well, you don't know anything about the Catholic faith. Oh, I don't, huh? I don't. <laughs> yeah, let me get that. Let me. Get, let, I bet, brethren, I beg your pardon. I, I beg your pardon. Yeah, I don't know anything about the Catholic faith, huh? Yeah, I, I, I never looked into it myself to see what kind of nonsense you guys are being taught, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Roman Catholic Catechism, page 563, their verse numbers 2090, 2091, and 2092. This is their whole spiel about um, trying to make the uh, Ten Commandments doctrinal and salvific for us today. Okay, But this is where this comes from. And you got to remember about Catholicism that what they started doing from the very beginning. And, and dear brother, dear brother, dear brother, okay? We are made in the likeness of God in that we have a spirit, soul, and body, dear brother, okay? I understand your reservations with that. And also, too, brethren, you got to remember, when it comes to our fellow saints, you have to keep this in mind. Christians, Christianity has been induced, okay, has been seduced by Rome with this nonsensical one God and three persons nonsense. So we have to have a little grace on our parts when talking with brethren who are saints but yet still cling to a little bit of the vestige of the Trinitarian nonsense, okay? We have to understand. From the inception of these whores, okay, this whore, it has always been one God and three persons as what they taught. Okay, from their inception, their beginning doctrine was one God and three persons. And over the literal centuries, okay, so we have to have grace for that. Okay, dear brother, dear, dear brother, okay, there is no trace of anything of a trinity, a three-person God, anywhere in Scripture. That's nonsense, okay? That is nonsense. We are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body just like God does, okay? But love you. Anyway, anyway, let's get to this. Let's get to this. Verbatim <laughs> as well as I can. Hope. When God reveals himself and calls him, man cannot fully respond to the divine love by his own powers. He must hope that God will give him the capacity to love him in return and to act in conformity with the commandments of charity. <laughs> charity, yeah. Which Rome knows all about, yeah. Hope is the confident expectation of divine blessing and be beatific we're referring on to the Beatitudes, okay, the, uh, um, the uh, Sermon on the Mount, which Rome wants you to believe is doctrinal for us today. It is not. It is not. Okay? I'm, I'm working, brother, at maintaining my composure. This kind of stuff gets me going every single time. I hate it. But... Uh, hope is the confident expectation of divine blessing and the beatific vision of God. It is also the fear of offending God's love and, and of incurring punishment. 
You know what hope is? Hmm? You want to know what hope is? I'm trying, brother. I'm, I'm trying. I'm working at this, okay? I'm trying. You want to know what hope is? Well, hope is an association with faith, right? And Jesus Christ is our hope. Uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. And Jesus Christ is our hope. We, the body of Christ, are waiting for the blessed hope, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Come up hither, we go up hither. You Christians get left behind and go through the great tribulation. Okay? Ugh. Anyway. Verse 2, uh, 2091 in the Roman Catholic Bible. The first commandment is also concerned with sins against hope, namely despair and presumption. Presumption. It, look, it's right there, right here. Right here is what I'm reading you, okay? Pause that and read it. Get a screenshot of that, okay? Yeah, who's merit? By despair, man ceases to hope for his personal salvation from God. Ooh, there's, a, there's something that, see, bleeds over into Christianity. Not all, not all, but in some circles where they are against once saved, always saved. Okay? Uh, uh, Charismatics, Catholics, uh, some Calvinists, some Calvinists, uh, such as... Paul Washer, <laughs> Ray Comfort, and even the beloved Leonard Ravenhill tiptoed again on that tiptoed. Leonard Ravenhill was he was kind of wishy washy on that subject of eternal security once saved, always saved. The evidence that you can get from listening to, and I love uh, Leonard Ravenhill, I do. He, he had some charismatic flair in him. He was about keeping commandments, yes, and stuff like that. And yes, he, I, he had his issues. But I, I do believe that uh, Leonard Ravenhill was a saved man. We'll find out when we get there. But like I said, Mr. Leonard Ravenhill tiptoed on that edge, okay? About, about, you know, being against once saved, always saved, okay? But despair, by despair, man ceases to hope for his personal salvation from God. And today, we don't have to hope for that. We're saved. What we're hoping for is come up hither to be with the Lord, okay? You come to the Lord on his terms today, okay, and he saved you. You're once saved, always saved. Okay? Well, let's continue this. For help in attaining, to, attaining it or for the forgiveness of his sins. Despair is contrary to God's goodness, to his justice. For the Lord is faithful to his promises and to his mercy. Here it is. There are two kinds of presumption. Either man presumes upon his own capabilities, his own capacities, excuse me, hoping to be able to save himself without help from on high, okay? Or he presumes upon God's almighty power or his mercy. Hoping to obtain his forgiveness without conversion and glory, without Merit. Who's merit? There it is. Right there. There it is. That is the sin of presumption. And that is what Catholics are taught. 
that it's a sin to presume that you are saved and going to heaven. One second, please. That is the sin of presumption. As taught by Satan and his church in their Bible that they themselves don't even read. Okay? All right? Now this bleeds... Not in all... See, there are two sides to this coin here. There are those such as, already mentioned, Paul Washer, Ray Comfort, Eric Line Fart, Mark the Messenger, just to name a few, who are against once saved, always saved, okay? And the Lord has had me to do videos on both Eric Line Fart and uh, Mark the Mess, okay? Two wicked devils who are against eternal security. Mark the Messenger, more pronounced because he's like, well, I, I never felt, once saved, always saved, never felt right with me. Well, felt right with you? You're lost, Mark Messenger. You're lost. Okay? You're not a Hebrew either. Okay? It's impossible for you to be a Hebrew. You're not a Hebrew. And Eric Lyon fart. Ugh, that guy's just disgusting. That guy's, that guy's crazy. Stay away from him. It's 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 pathetic. He's a he's he's a pathetic excuse. He really is. He really is. But there are those out there of this thing who are of this two-sided coin that are against eternal security. But then there are those that are for eternal security. Rightly teach the precepts given in Scripture of it. But what do they do? They use it as a license to sin and live in sin and to live flippantly without any fear of the Lord. Hence, the sleazy believists. I have heard some sleazy believists, fake gracers, give a very good um, explanation. They rarely use uh, scripture or even a Bible, but gave a very good description that was, did line up with scripture about the precepts, doctrine of eternal security. I, I, I've listened and watched it. Okay? They did. The problem is with them guys is they jump over the requirements of salvation. Okay? Brokenness, contrition, and calling upon the name of the Lord. Okay? They, they go over that. And they want to circumvent that. They don't like to deal with that. Okay? And they go right to belief. Not uh, skipping over the pathway to true belief. Okay? That's their problem. They're devils. Okay? But, see what happens is, you get these guys who actually preach eternal security in a correct scriptural fashion, but live contrary to it as a witness because they're not saved at all anyway so what happens is false converts people who's like you gotta keep the commandments they see that and they judge unrighteously because they're judging on the outward appearance but see with those people it is only with the fruit of their eyes that they see okay all right all right and ye shall know them by their fruits all right as we have discussed before, outward chastisement sometimes can be seen, but most of the times cannot be seen by us saints. If a brother or sister is being chastised by the Lord, more often than not, we're not going to know about it, unless it's something like dramatic or, you know, plain to see. The fruits of that chastisement, the peaceable fruits of righteousness that come after it, that's where we discern and judge the fruit. Okay? All right? All right? And see, saints sin. Saints sin. We discussed this in the previous video. Okay? Saints sin. All right? And see, because of these devils, you people have this, this idea of sinless perfection here on earth while man spirit soul and body spirit and soul 
trapped in the sagging sin suit. I like that, brother. Thank you for that. Okay? So, when they see a saint sin, saint sin, they're like, There's, how can this guy be saved? Okay? We've, we've talked about this at length. But the people, now, the, the, what we're going to be focusing on in this one, brother, this is the focus, okay? This is the, this is the point of this video, okay? We, we've talked about this on many occasions. Why does someone reject eternal security? Number one, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. That's, that's number one. I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of uh, information, um, scripture, uh, videos on this channel where we talk about rightly dividing the word of truth. That is the starting point of group error for these guys. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, that's, that's number one. Okay, that's, the, that's where they first mess up. Okay, you could, you could argue and say, well, the first thing is they're not saved. You're right. You're right. But doctrinally, they, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. So they aren't starting on a right foundation to begin with. Okay? But why does someone reject scriptural, the doctrine, the truth of once saved, always saved? They don't rightly divide the word of truth. But there's... The, what is the under, what's the, um, what, what, what's the word you have used on a couple of occasions? Um, the undercurrent. What is the undercurrent that leads this fiasco, nonsense, of being against eternal security today? Luke 18. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Now, uh, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me because, guess what? My mouth goes quicker than this sometimes. Okay, so read along with me. All right? All right? Now, we have discussed this in videos before, which will be, if I can remember, will be in the description box. But, unfortunately, you are only as relevant as your latest video. Okay, that, that is a sad fact. Okay, that is a sad fact. All right? <laughs> to, to, to the world. And this is, we're on a worldly platform here, brother. So, anyway. What's the undercurrent here? Luke 18, verses 9 on verse 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. I've been confirmed. I've been baptized. I ate the cookie and drank the wine. I go to confession. I belong to uh, <laughs> the church that Christ founded. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. I'm a German Catholic. Lutheran. Good for you. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. Pharisee takes their tradition here and scripture, well, uh, the scripture, the authorized version, they don't even consider. But they're, they're little Bibles that they don't even use that, are, that come from these devils. Tradition is here. Here's scripture. That's a Pharisee. Okay? That is a Pharisee. All right? Pharisee upholds man's, Satan's traditions, man, over Scripture. You look into anything that comes from Rome, they, they boast about that. That's why you Catholics are not encouraged to truly study Scripture on your own with the Lord. Because what do they tell you? Don't read it too much because if you do, you'll get messed up in the heresy. Then you, you, you got to come to us for us to tell you what this means. And see, that whole reasoning has brought about this. You got to have credentials, the piece of paper. It, it's, it's, all, it's all from Rome, people. Okay? Verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. I keep the commandments. I do what's required in the law. God, 
I thank thee that I am not as other men are. And when you run into these people who are, you got to keep the commandments about, you know, who are against once saved, always saved, what do they, they have to counteract the truth of once saved, always saved. So what do they do? I, 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 me, 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 me. Okay? Some are very good at uh, hiding it under a false humility. Like that Paul Washer, dude, dude, whoever you are, get away from that Calvinistic scumbag. Okay? Get away from Paul Washer. That guy is lost. He's going to hell. He's a devil. Okay? And yes, he has said true things. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. But the man's lost. Okay? The man's lost. He makes saved people question what, the, what their own salvation when he may, and he makes those who are not saved saving themselves confident in the fact that they're keeping the commandments. Okay? The guy is wicked. Stay away from Paul Washer. Okay? That guy is evil. All right? All right? Stay away from that guy. All right? The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Verse 12. I fast twice in the week. A mechanical religiosity. I give tithes of all that I possess. Tithing is not a requirement for us today. It is not. God does not dwell in temples, buildings made by hands. If you're saved, the Father, you know, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, He dwells within you if you're saved, if you're really His. Okay? Not in a building. Okay? So verse 12 is, he's saying, because I do this of the law. Okay? And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but <clears throat> smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Here it is. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The undercurrent of these people who want to reject uh, once saved, always saved, eternal security, what is their undercurrent? Is that they exalt themselves. They exalt themselves. Okay? That's what it is. Mark the messenger that disgusting, disgusting, lying, heathen devil boasts himself. Now, he puts on a really good shoe of religiosity and humility. Kind of like uh, the hunter from England. Puts on this really good performance of being this humble guy. But, no, when, you, you, when push comes to shove, I, I keep the commandments. I bet you do. Same with that, and unfortunately, I know this about what I have seen from that Eric Lyon fart guy. Um, that guy puts also a thing of being humble, okay? <laughs> the the uh, other Englishman who I hate even made a good comment about that guy. It's like, oh yeah, you're attacking me, but yet you call me uh, your brother. No, it's like, but it's like, oh, he said, oh, but you say to me, bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's funny. Even devils can uh, sniff out that Eric Lyon fart guy. But again, another example of this false humility, this facade that the Paul Washer, Air, uh, uh, Ray Comfort, okay, and there are a lot others, but those are the ones that just come to mind with this false humility. But see, when you when you scratch this. When you scratch these guys, when they get nicked by the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the authorized version, they crumple. They crumple. And they chaff and redirect. See, the main thing about this with these guys is what? Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 30 on to verse 33. 
What shall we say then that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness? Wherefore? Wherefore? Why? Why? Because they sought it not by faith. And remember, and we're going to look at the verse out here a little bit. The law is not of faith. The law is not of faith. But, hey, you've got to keep the commandments. Where are they? Why are they? They're right here in the scriptures. They were written on tables of stone. Okay? All right? The law was not of faith. Your faith was in that God would honor you for keeping the law. Okay, that's what the faith was in. But the law itself, you didn't need faith in the law. Why? Because it's written right here. You want, you want the law? It's right here in the scripture. Okay? The law is not a faith. Okay? Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. This is why, dear friend, brokenness of your self-righteousness is a requirement for the Lord to save you. And this is why you have to despise easy believism. Okay? And very quickly, rabbit here. Easy believism is not in and of itself its own denomination. Denomination. Don't. Let's not get started on that. It's an umbrella term that has infected some Baptists, all the Methodists, um, not really Charismatics, but um, other denominations and stuff like that. These non-denominations, which is a denomination in and of itself, some of these King James Bible believing Christians, which has become its own denomination. Okay? Sleazy believism is a umbrella term in a general sense that has infected many areas of this disgusting thing called Christianity. Like you had said, brother, charismatic. This is a rabbit. We'll get back to scripture here in a minute. Charismatic is an umbrella term. Usually when I say to you charismatic, you think of what? The faith healer guys, right? That kind of stuff. But the truth is, the charismatic thing is also a umbrella term. Because there are charismatic Catholics. There are charismatic Lutherans. The whole... Um, Revival nonsense that happened last year. Um, that was brought on by charismatic Methodists. Okay? So the term charismatic is an umbrella term also. The ones that I usually, that the Lord has me to attack viciously, <laughs> are the Pentecostals. The Pentecostals. Okay? The Pentecostals. So, going forward, when you hear me say, and you're right, brother, you're right, you're, you, you brought that up in conversation, you're right, it is an umbrella term. So, in the future, if I don't remember, you hear me saying pent uh, charismatic, I'm usually making a reference onto Pentecostals, okay? But that's an umbrella term, all right? But now let's get back to this. Verse 32 again, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, We are saved by grace through faith. Grace, unmerited favor, bestow the better, blessing the lesser. But see, when you are one who believes you have to keep the commandments, you knot yourself up a little while trying to maintain a facade of civility and humility. It doesn't work. Why? Because I've done this. I, Like, you're going to stand before the Lord and say, well, you got to let me in because I did this, this, and this. Today. For today. And see, the, the starting point of all this 
is that these guys don't lightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Some of these um, uh, free grace scoundrels, they claim to be dispensational, but then again, they say it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. That's not being dispensational. We've, we've covered that in many videos. Let's continue. Wherefore, because they were, in verse 32 again, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Go back to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Talk about hypocrites, okay? And guess what? Saints are hypocrites, unless you're a hypocrite sometimes, unless you're from the coasts of England, okay? Anyway, Romans chapter 2, verses 17 and verse 24. You guys who keep the law, who make your boast in the law, whatever law it is, whether it's the law of scripture or tradition, man, whatever it is, okay? Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. And knowest his will, and approvest of the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And our, and you know, I, I gotta mention real quickly, uh, Mark the Messenger, who unfortunately I had watched quite a few of his things, and his 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 look, that deer in the headlight, and peace and blessing, peace and blessing, peace and blessing. Shut up, man! You're not safe. He has some good standards that he preaches on. Yes. But he's doctrinally out the get-go uh, messed up. He's lost. But yet he has good standards. Paul Washer has some good standards. Yes, he does. He's lost. Okay? Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that kind of thing in mind. Truth can come from a devil. Unfortunately, you see it all the time here on YouTube. You do. You do. Truth can come from a false convert. Don't forget that. Okay? That's why you do have to be a fruit discerner. You bluch. Anyway. Oh, brother, I, that, that can't go away. <laughs> make my point with that. Okay, so, never mind. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. I thank thee, Lord, that I'm not like other men. I'm not an adulterer. I don't steal or anything like that. Not like this guy. An instructor of the foolish. A teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. They profess that they know God. But in works, I keep the eye. But in works, you deny him. The ultimate work that was done is the death, burial, and resurrection. So when you go about to keeping, whether it's trying to keep the Ten Commandments, or, or some kind of man-made tradition law, you are saying, Mr. Washer, Mr. Comfort, Mr. Lying Fart, Mr. Messenger, you are saying that when you, the Lord said it's finished, you're saying that's not enough. Eric, you, you're a liar. You're going to hell. Shame. You seem like a uh, decent fellow. A little smug and cocky, but you seem a decent fellow. Shame. Shame. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? I don't steal things, yes, but you're stealing the truth from people when you are preaching that they got to keep the commandments and that once saved, always saved. It's not how it is for us today in this dispensation. 
And you don't even rightly divide the word of truth, these guys. They don't, okay? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? And remember, what does our Lord say? If you look upon a maid and Google after her or oogle after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery. You can, can commit adultery by what happens because of what you put before your face, right? Because of what you see on the television or those stupid television shows or whatever, you know? You commit adultery. Not physically, but how many of you, if you were honest with yourself, how many of you walking down the street and you see a fine-looking woman? I mean, fine-looking. How many of you, because of what you've put before your eyes, have been taught to undress what you see? To think immediately, fleshly, carnally, huh? Oh, you don't, huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. You're sinlessly perfect. Huh. Anyway. Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? That's interesting. Because those that are uh, there are those out there, and keeping names out of this one, who are abhor idols, abhor idols, but yes, they make an idol of a certain day or of a certain idea. They they hate the marionette statue or the Buddha statue. Praise the Lord, they hate that. Good, that's good. But see, they replace that with a principle, with an idea, with the day of the month, with a festive time. So, you take one and replace it with another. Gotta watch out for that. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? And we're gonna get to that in James here in a little bit, okay? <laughs> For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. And here's the thing. These guys like Mark the Messenger and uh, Eric Lionfart and stuff like that who talk about, you know, keeping commandments and stuff like that. Here's the thing. The, if you were to corner, if you were to be able, you'd be more likely able to speak to that idiot Eric than the, his holiness. And I'm not talking about the one from Maine. Can't talk to him anyway. But uh, the guy, uh, Mark the Messenger, uh, if you were to scripturally sit down with one of these guys, it's like, okay, now, let's, let's go through what the Father has written. Let's, let's see what your preaching lines up. Um, it's really easy to point out, and you'll see that not even these guys can keep the law perfectly. There's a continuation. See, it's not, see, that's the thing. It's not finished. Okay? To these guys who are against eternal security. If you, dear, dear Catholic, okay, this, 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 this is trash. That's trash. Okay? The sin of presumption, which at the beginning of this video we went through, that's the sin of presumption. Okay? We are eternally secure today. All right? You serve God that is daily, I don't know how many times a day across the world, uh, is being sacrificed day in and day out with the little cookie and the glass of wine thing. That's another, they're sacrificing the Lord again. Because the Jesuit priest, whose back you see as he raises the S-U-N, okay, he's abracadabra, hocus pocus, calling God into the cookie and making the wine blood. And uh, they, the, you, you, hey, Catholic, you don't know. Yeah. Have you read this? Okay, have you even read what they want you to believe? No, you haven't. That, that's scary. That's scary. I, and, and now this is a mention onto the one in Maine. Uh, His Holiness, uh, he, he, he has also read this, you know. And that's sad when people like me, I know your system probably more better than most of you Catholics do. That's sad. That's sad. But I'll tell you, when speaking with the Catholic, knowing know thy enemy in a way, uh, in a way, 
Uh, you know, you know truth first, and Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. And the Spirit of truth, and the Lord is that Spirit. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Uh, you need to know truth first before you can start, you know, discerning evil. Okay, but once the Lord is in you and He guides you into that, I'll tell you. A lot of the Catholics that I have personally encountered when start talking about stuff that in here, they like the Mark the Messenger thing. They go uh, in the face. They're gone. They're in the headlights. Okay? Verse 29. All right? Wait, what, what, what am I? Where, where are we here at? Uh, oh, okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Verses 1 and verse 7. See, you who are against eternal security, and you call yourself a Christian, you boast about the death, burial, and resurrection, but yet you don't believe in eternal security, once saved, always saved. They, they, they call it conditional security or something like that. And it's so disgusting when people who aren't saved, these, these fake gracers, try to defend eternal security against someone who is, uh, what is it, conditional security. That, that Tom idiot does that all the time. What a disgusting... Ugh. Anyway. Romans 4, verses 1 on verse 7. Now, in the description box will be the video on James chapter 2. Okay? Christian, especially Catholics, like to try to blend James 2 and what Paul taught together. It doesn't work because James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's written for another dispensation. Okay? Just like Hebrews. On to the Hebrews. And black Hebrew Israelites, you're not Hebrews. Hey, you British Hebrew Israelites, you're not Hebrews. You can't be. It's impossible. Okay? Anyway. All right? Anyway. They like to confuse and blend together James 2 with what Paul preached. And atheists point out, whoa, 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 that's uh, clear. And what do the Christians do? What do the, before we read in Romans chapter 4, well, I'll show you. What do the Christians taught by Rome? Even, you know, even some of you Baptists and uh, Methodists and all you guys. What, what do they do? Uh, Colossians 2, verse 8. It's like trying to defend the, the Satanic Trinity. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, and vain deceit after the tradition of men. After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And see, the people who are against eternal security today, they have to go to other dispensations where eternal security isn't there. And it's like, well, yeah, that's another dispensation. It's not today. Okay? Yeah, you're right. Under the law, there was no eternal security. You're right. You're right. Bravo. Bravo. And when you go to Hebrews, as we will be going to today, and when you go to James, you're right. You're right. You're right. Why? Because Hebrews and James is specifically written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Excuse me. And the only ones that have eternal security during the time of Jacob's trouble and the 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Okay? Uh, see, the key for this is, you, you know, you get yourself a Strong's or you go on the King James Bible online and... Check out the word seal. Okay? No, brother, we're not talking about the one in the water. Okay? <laughs> All right? That, that's, good, that's a good um, 
launching point for you to go to for the Lord to show you this, okay? But anyway, they like to blend James and Paul together and say that they're talking back to back. No, they're talking about two different things for two different dispensations, okay? All right? So when you read Romans 4, and you compare it to James chapter 4, okay, you're going to see, okay, it's a contradiction. How do you explain it? The Christian who doesn't rightly divide the word of truth, philosophy and vain deceit, just like they do with the Trinity. Uh, no, we have a sure, more sure word of prophecy, okay? See, people... When someone doesn't believe the truth for today of eternal security, number one, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Number one. Number two, they're boasting themselves. It's about I, 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 me, me, me. They are their own God. Pride! Pride! Well, Brad, you say you have a pride problem. I sure do. But see, the Lord broke me. I know I'm not a good person. I know I can't save myself. I know that salvation isn't here. Okay? And see, when you've got someone who is against eternal security, it's in their hands. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Now, you read that, then you go ahead, we're not going to go there because we've covered it. Okay, we've covered it. Hey, 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 if you don't want to take your time and watch the video, and you want to shoot off, shoot off at the mouth, that's on you, pal. That ain't my problem. That's your problem. Okay? You look at that verse. Verse 2. Then you go to James. Can faith save him? Well, Paul says yes. By his grace. Through our faith. Yes. Yes. Paul says yes. James says no. It, atheists, atheists. You know when you when the Lord opens up a door and you get to explain to an atheist as simple as possible about rightly dividing the word of truth, and they even an atheist will look at you like, oh, you can see the light come on. It's like okay, they don't buy or believe you know, on the Lord anyway. But explaining that contradiction to them. When you bring up <laughs> rightly dividing the word of truth and you see it in the face of the atheist who's accosting you over it, you see the light come on. It's like, well, that makes sense. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, rightly dividing is so important. And if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you got to go to man, the, the love of man's wisdom. You gotta go to Rome. You gotta go to, the, to Satan on how to describe something that is perfectly given to you in Scripture, rightly divided. Could you look at you look at this? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. Compare that to James. They contradict. They do. They do. How do we explain that? Simple. The very first verse in the book of James, written unto the twelve tribes. It's for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. People, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Okay? This, this, is, this is a foundational thing. Okay? But let's continue. What say the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. 
You gotta take me in because you owe it to me. Good luck with that. But to him that worketh not. Now, when he's saying work here, worketh, worketh, okay? It's not a contradiction with Ephesians 2 verse 10. It's in reference to the law, okay? Not, not this tripe, but the scriptural law which when you read Acts 15, Acts 15, okay, that's what the worketh there is a reference onto, okay? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed, are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered? Verse 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Again, with what we just read, you compare that with James, you're going to see a clear, clear contradiction. And there is no contradiction in Scripture. But Brad, you just said, rightly divided. It's written for someone else for a different dispensation friend. But these guys don't teach you that. Okay? Alright? Now, go to Galatians 3. Galatians, in and of itself, when it comes to this topic of keeping the law today, and like the one Jeremiah 16, Oh, we keep the law for sanctification. <laughs> Is it a bad thing to try to strive for that standard? No. No, it isn't. It's not a bad thing. But see, what that Jeremiah 16 project guy in that comment, and I had, you know, that no talking with a guy like that. Um, he was weaving in there, well, in order to stay saved, you got to, you go, go to hell. Go to hell. That's, I'll read Acts 15, okay? That's not how it works, all right? Got to watch out for that. You got to watch out for these guys who have salvation scripturally accurate, but sanctification as something that requires keeping of the law. Ah, <coughs> Galatians 3, <coughs> verses 10 on to verse 12. For as many as are the works of the law, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Why aren't you guys sacrificing animals. You claim, well, the blood of Jesus. Okay, you're right. You're right. But the Lord rescued us from the curse of the law. Not that we are not under law. We're under the law to Christ, which is given to us specifically within the Pauline epistles. And you read Romans 13, there's no keeping the Sabbath either. Okay. But that no man is justified by the law in the, in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And as I told you earlier, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. And see, what Catholicism has done has taught you, Christian, to have faith in this. It's like the easy believer. What's their faith in? Their faith is in their faith. Just like the Christian scientist. Just like the Pentecostal with the name it and claim it. Okay? 
See, the object of our faith is the Lord Jesus Christ. But the object of the, of the faith of the Catholic is their traditions. The object of the faith of the easy believers is their faith. Okay? The law is not a faith. Like I told you. Where's the law? It's right here in the scriptures. Where's the law for the Catholic? Oh, it's right here. Hmm. And see, it's a thing of boasting. It's a thing of pride for these people. Go to Hebrews. 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 Chapter 7. One verse to start. One verse in Hebrews 7, verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect. Even though, and you read about this in Romans 7, even though the law in and of itself was perfect, those are the perfect requirements of God that no man could do except one man, Jesus Christ. Is come in the flesh. Yeah. Only he could do it. Because he's got the Father. See, the commandments are perfect in and, of the, in and of themselves. And only God could keep them. They were given unto us. And Paul talks about this in Galatians. To show us of how inadequate and inept we are at keeping what God has said perfectly. For the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw nigh unto God Hebrews 10 1 on to verse 4 for the law having a shadow of good things to come not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually Make the comers thereunto perfect. Hence the Catholic Mass. It's a continual thing. You have to continually do it. It's finished. <coughs> it's finished. Today. You know, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? He paid the price. Okay? All right. All right. Then, for then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. <coughs> uh, verse 2 there. <coughs> um, now, one of, my, one of the things that I get plagued with when I get attacked spiritually are, are memories. Memories of past sins. Uh, the devil, when he's allowed, um, can really badger and beat me silly when you're in prayer and all of a sudden something that you did 20 years ago comes to head. It's like, where'd that come from? Or you see something, a person, a spirit's own body, and something comes back, okay? Right? But see, conscience of sins, meaning forgiveness. Okay? For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because the worshippers once purged should have no should have had no more conscience of sin and sins. And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the law is going to be brought back. And a brother asks us, like, well, wait a minute. The blood of Jesus already took care of this. Yes, you're right. But see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, number one, we, the body of Christ, are not on the earth. Number one, okay? Number two, Jewry in its entirety has rejected the Lord and don't count, and they count the blood of the cross as an unclean thing. So to them, they have to content, take up again the sacrificial system, okay? All right, that one's easy to explain, okay? Verse 3, 
But in those sacrifices, there is remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Okay? And when you read in James chapter 2, 1 verse, verse 10, and here, and here is a good place where you can usually get these guys. Okay? James 2.10 For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's, he is guilty of all. So when these guys are about, well, you've got to keep the commandments, then it's not finished. Because you bring them to that, and everyone who's, who's a law keeper today, a true legalist, okay, uh, they acknowledge. It's like, well, yeah. So, it's not finished then, is it? If you're telling me i got to keep the law. It's finished, but you're saying i got to keep the law to stay right with God? Like that Jeremiah 16 project guy was saying, that you got to, no. No. See, again, it's out of our hands. And someone who is proud, someone who is not saved, someone who is not broken of their self-righteousness, when they have something in their corner or in their pocket that they could say, well, I've done this, I've done this. Okay? A babe, a novice, can fall into that trap at the first, but if you're if you're a saint of the Church of the Living God, and you you got the scriptures, and you and you're and you have like another an elder saint of something like or something like that, you're not going to stay there that long. There, there's no way. And plus, the Lord within you is like, hey, <laughs> read. Let me show you. Okay, he he'll do that. Okay, but. Now let's go over a couple of just quick, simple, uh, there are, I mean, this could be very detailed, just quick and simple places that show you that today, today, in this dispensation, you come to the Lord on His terms. You don't boot the door out of the way and say, oh, I saved myself because I, I think I am, therefore I am. No. You go to the Lord his way, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name, he saved you, you're eternally secure. And saints sin. And see, you think that they don't because of what these guys have done. But here are some simple ones, simple, simple ones, okay? 2 Corinthians 1, 20 on to the close. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 20 on to the close of the chapter. <clears throat> For all the promises of God in him, our Lord Jesus Christ, are yea, yes, and amen, truth, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God. And the Pentecost, charismatic Pentecostals, such as David Wilkerson, good example, um, the anointing is on me. I'm anointed. Well, Remember, what does Christ mean? Christ means anointed one. Okay? Right? The Lord's anointed. Christ, the Lord's anointed. Alright? Pentecostals don't believe in once saved, always saved. They believe that the Lord can come and go, come and go, just like he did under the Old Testament. That's true. But that's not how it is for us today. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Who hath also... Don't look at me. Sealed us. And given the earnest of the capital S, the Lord himself, spirit in our hearts. <clears throat> Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you I came not as yet unto corn. 
not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. For by faith ye stand. Dominion over your faith, not like a diatrophies. Okay? But <clears throat> looking at verse 22 again, who hath also sealed. That's the key word, sealed. Once saved, always saved. Go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. We're going to be reading verses 18 on to verse 21. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that, that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. <laughs> I remember that putz from Oregon going off on this, trying to defend himself, keep his cover up. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. <clears throat> Verse 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth. In Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Skip down to Verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Now stop. Abideth. Abideth in you. Okay? Christ means anointed one. The, the Lord's anointed. Okay? Yeshua. Uh, Yeshua Jesus. Jehovah saves. The Lord's anointed. Jesus Christ, okay? But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. That's talking about the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit that we are sealed with until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? And ye need not that any man teach you, because the spirit of truth, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. God uses man. Yes, he does. We've talked about that in many videos. Okay? Called to preach. Okay? He uses man. Okay? Yes, he does. A man who has the Lord in him, using the scriptures, speaking to you through the scriptures, through the Lord that lives within that saved man. Okay? But the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth. And is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Okay? Now, <laughs> second, uh, where are we at? Okay, no, before we get to that. Um, 1 John 3, verses 7 on verse 10. Look across the page. These people, uh, Jean Boschoff was a... a Final call. Remember that guy? He was in hell. What some of these guys will do who are who say that if you're saved, you don't sin anymore, they like to come here. They like to come to John, 1 John 3. And they point out what God is talking about, the spirit that dwells within the person, spirit, soul, and body. The Lord lives within me. A fake gracer within them is that what? That Antichrist. That spirit. That spirit of Antichrist. Which is against and wants to replace. And think about it. How Antichrist is it that today you go around Mr. Jeremiah 16 Project 
saying that you got to keep the commandments to stay saved. I should unblock that guy. But then again, that would lead to just useless headbutting. But anyway. But they like to come to 1 John 3. Jean Boschoff did that quite a bit. It's like, well, if you're saved, you don't sin anymore. What is this talking about? Verses 7 on verse 10. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he, who, the Lord, is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Pay attention. Whosoever is born of God, born again. Paul never talked about being born again. He never... <laughs> it's like the ridiculous, Jesus never said he was God. You're right. Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He didn't have to. He said, I am. You read Paul, the Pauline epistles, clearly defining born again. Just never use the phrase born again. Okay? All right? That is one of the stupidest arguments I have ever personally encountered. Paul never said born again. Wait a minute. Just go away. <laughs> no, but he defined it. He defined being born again. Okay? Give me a break. Whosoever is born of God. We have a natural birth. You know, the water breaks. And in order to be saved, we have a second birth because we die to self. We're born again. Okay? Someone who goes over, who's, who leaps over contrition, brokenness, and fear of the Lord, and goes right to belief, they, they are not born of God. Hey, easy believest, you're not born of God, you're lost. But, <clears throat> whosoever is born of God, born again. And when you are born again, what happens? Well, we're going to read about that in Ephesians. Don't worry about it. But what happens? When you're born again, you're made a new creature. What is it that makes you a new creature? That you, like an AA guy or a Narc Anonymous guy, can, through their own sheer willpower, have their changed life? No. You're a new creature because you have the Lord living within you. That makes you a new creature. Okay? So, whosoever is born of God, being born again, not of corruptible seed, that needs to be constantly redone. Okay? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Okay, if you're born again, you're a new creature, the Lord is in you. The Lord never sinned. The Lord can't sin. So, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. <clears throat> Tie this up. For his seed remaineth, remaineth. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Remaineth. Abideth, remaineth. Remaineth, abideth. Eternally secure. Today. For his seed remaineth in him. What is that? see the reference on it. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. Okay. And he cannot sin. He, the seed that remains within us, cannot sin. God within you, we've talked about this, dude. We've talked about God within you, saint, cannot, will not, 
lead you or guide you into sin. He will let your, his hand off of you to let you do whatever you're going to do. Okay? He will not guide. When you hear someone say, well, I talked about the Lord. For example, a saved person saying, well, I'm going to go get a tattoo. That, that uh, prohibition against tattoos has not been undone anywhere in Scripture. That's a binding thing. You're not supposed to get a tattoo. Okay? Anyway, someone who claims to be saved, well, I talked about it with the Lord, and he's okay with it. You might have talked to something, but you didn't talk to the Lord, and the Lord is definitely not okay with it. Well, I talked to the Lord, and he says it's okay that we, the man saying this, that we get an abortion. Really? 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 Trying to justify murder at the behest of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, so, well, I talked about it with the Lord, and he said it was okay that we could get an abortion. I wish that was an exaggeration. I wish I could tell you that I have not encountered that. that. See, that's the depth of just as if I. Okay? So the he is, look at the verse, is reference onto the seed, the Lord. Verse 9 is telling you that what John is talking about here is that that lives within you. Someone who is lost has that spirit of Antichrist within them. Okay? When the Lord saves you, He lives within you. For His seed remaineth in Him, and He cannot sin, because He is born of God. This doesn't mean that a saint, a saved person, doesn't sin anymore. God within you doesn't sin, can't sin. Okay? That is what this is talking about. Okay? Alright? If you ever have a chance, brother, sister, and you run into one of these guys, and you don't sin anymore, and they come to here, may the Lord give uh, grant you the... Uh, grant you that you tear them apart scripturally and that you bash their brains in with that verse right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 10. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Okay? Now, I want to also touch on this 1 John 2, verse 19 thing. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Paul in 2 Thessalonians talks about a falling away. There are heretic lost devils out there who want you to believe that falling away is saved people getting messed up. That is not what it is. Go to Luke chapter 8. Go to Luke chapter 8. Verses 10 on to verse 15. And he said, this is the parable of the sower. Now, in this, it is kingdom of God, which is spiritual. Remember, kingdom of heaven always, always, always is a reference onto the kingdom that's going to be at Jerusalem. Kingdom of God, more often than not, is a reference onto the spiritual, not the physical. Okay? There are... According to context, there are places where kingdom of God can be a reference onto the physical. More often than not, it's the spiritual. 
which this is talking about. And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, spiritual. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Why do you not understand my speech? Why? Because you are of your father the devil. Have you, have you ever explained something so simply that a little rugrat can get it, but yet you're talking to an educated man, and they look at you like Mark the Messenger with the deer in the headlights look. And you're like, you look at the kid, then you look at the dude, it's like the, the kid gets this, and you don't. You're an educated guy, you went to a Jesuit college, but yet the little rug rat who doesn't know what side of the playpen smells worse yet gets this and you don't. That, that, that always, that, that always, you know, it's like, you, I, I mean, I've encountered, I'm sure some of you have, I know one brother from Croatia has, you encounter some of these people when the Lord gives you something that is so simple that a little rug rat gets it, but yet the educated individual in front of you has no clue of what you're saying about. And you're and you as a saint, you're like, what, what, dude, I can't tell you any more simpler. That's that's <laughs> and you don't get that? Okay, here, can I hand you a tract? It's like, okay, all right. But anyway. Now the parable is this. The seed is the lowercase w word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Which is the sword of the Spirit. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We could do that one all day. Okay? Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. They have no root. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued. Remaineth, abideth, continue. These have no root. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is talking about the falling away. Which is going on. Okay? Alright? One another. Well, we're not going to go to the other yet. We're not going to go to the other yet because we're going to encompass that. But there is another part in Scripture where it talks about falling away. And what's interesting to note here, hinge this. When this mention of falling away is here, had Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? And also, um, just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. See, saved people fall all the time. Lost, false converts who have no root, who endure for a while, but when the rubber hits the road, <clears throat> they fall away, and then they are made manifest that they're not all of us. <clears throat> if you're still watching me, what do you do with that? Well, I'm sure you can come up with some very Jesuitical, clever things to do to try to circumvent truth. You're really good at that, unfortunately. Okay? Now, more on the seal thing. Hinge what we just looked at. Hinge the falling away thing. Fall away. Hinge that. Go to Ephesians. Now this, this is obvious. Okay? The, these are obvious ones. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Alright? Ephesians 1. Alright? Oh! Verses 12 
under verse 14. That we should be the praise of His glory. His glory. Because we are saved by His grace through our faith. And not by anything that we do ourselves. Heretics like to say, well, repentance, calling on those, those are works. Uh, no, those are requirements. You have to be broken before you can be fixed. You have to die before you can be born again. Okay? All right? And the lesser cries out to the greater. And see, you guys can't understand that because you've never been broken. Anyway, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. Okay, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit, and the Lord is that spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Eternity with the Lord until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Isn't it interesting to know that a majority of the people who are all about works to stay saved, not all of them, which is unusual, are against the redemption of the purchased possession. They believe that Christians are going through the great tribulation. They do. Most of them. Not all of them. And those ones are very peculiar. Excuse me. Okay? And also, like I said, these are, these are basic. Okay? Uh, Ephesians 4.30. Okay? Ephesians 4.30. <laughs> and grieve not... Uh, let's, let's add 29. Let's actually 29 under 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, which does encompass profanity. But you know what the ultimate corrupt communication is? Hey, today you got to keep the commandments to stay safe. Huh? Oh, uh, we're going through the great tribulation. Hmm? Once saved, always saved is heresy. Those are corrupt communications. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all man, malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And if, if you've gone the way to the cross, his way, and he's forgiven you, we are to forgive one another, a true brother. But you're not my brother if you've boot, booted the door and climbed up some other way, Jack. Okay? And also, too, we talk about this. This is refuted with the Calvinist video, which will be in the description box. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. See, again, this against eternal security. It's foundation that it goes off of is a lack of doing this. Hey, Mark the Messenger. He's, he won't watch this, but Mark the Messenger. And you and you people who are like that. Ken Hoven. Study and show thyself approved not of God. Workmen that needeth not to be ashamed. They okay, stop. Mark the Messenger in the one video. Study and show thyself approved not of God. Read the verse. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Brother, we can't talk about rightly dividing enough. We can't. Some of you are like, Brad, no, we can't. We can't. Christians 
are not taught to do so. And because they are not taught to do so, that's why we're talking about this today. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, that you have your salvation in your hands by keeping the commandments. Today. Today. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Mark the Messenger and Eric Lionheart. Oh, excuse me. Who is, of whom is Paul Washer and Ray Comfort. <clears throat> excuse me. Of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthroweth and overthrow the faith of some. Now those guys mentioned don't say about the uh, uh, resurrection past already, at least not that I know of, but they, they, sh they have profane and vain babblings. Trying to convince someone that they have to keep the law today is vain. Because if they couldn't do it back then, you can't do it now. Even with the Lord in you, because the Lord ain't holding a gun to you. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And see, it's right there where these guys, they'll see like a saint sin, and then they'll scoff at the scriptural truth of eternal security, which we just gave basic, simple verses showing you that today, in this dispensation, you go to the Lord on His terms. You are once saved, always saved. Okay? A saint can sin. A saint. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Just, just that one verse. Just that one verse. Verse 16. Proverbs 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Okay? A saved person can get really messed up. And then get handed over to Satan for, for the destruction of the flesh. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That can happen. I've known people who have had that happen and died and they're in heaven. Okay? That happens. It does. Okay? It does. But see, when you got someone who's saying it ain't finished... And they got to put, put tradition into their hands. When someone... Now, this, this I have encountered on quite a few occasions. But this is a place that people who like to refute the truth for today. Of once saved, always saved. Eternal security. They like to go to Hebrews. What, who's the book of Hebrews written to? Hebrews! Okay? Hebrews! It's written on Hebrews! Okay? Not Japhethites. Not Hamites. Not even some Shemites. But Hebrews! For the time of Jacob's trouble. There will be those out there, and there are many out there, um, charismatic Pentecostals are notorious for this. They will come to Hebrews 6 to say that you can lose your salvation. But you know what they always encompass today, these guys who say, who say, well, eternal security is a lie. And they go to Hebrews chapter 6, and they read here in Hebrews chapter 6 about where it says, yes, you can lose your salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble because eternal security is only there for the 144,000 Jews, Hebrews. Okay? 
But you know what they do? They come here and they, they point to the scriptures that show that, yeah, you can lose your salvation. Your salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, you can. But they always encompass that you can get it back by, you know, paying penance, give a good tithe, or do works, meet for repentance, and blah, 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 blah. But they try to encompass that today. When you, but when you read Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 12, there, there's a problem. There's a big problem. Because people will come to Hebrews 6 to, and use the verses here that we're going to look at to say, see, there's no such thing as eternal security. During the time of Jacob's trouble, except for the 144,000 Jews, you're right. But they say, well, it's for today. But see, in Hebrews here, you can't get it back. You're telling me that I can get it back. Aha. Aha. In Amos chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, Talks about a famine in the land. Okay? The fulfillment of that will be during the time of Jacob's trouble. But today, how is there a famine in the land? People are not hearing the word of God, the authorized version. They're not even hearing a Bible. They're barely even hearing this garbage. All led by feelings. But, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 12. Remember I told you about the falling away to hinge that? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of doctrine of, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of, the, of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Why, why those two verses? Because it's written for a different dispensation where eternal security is not there. The church... The body of Christ is not on the earth. Okay? During the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble, these Christians that get left behind, okay, the, the, the sleazy believers, believers devils are going to be trying to take these guys back to Paul and try to say that, well, you're once saved, always saved. Today, during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, they're going to reverse it. Okay? That's what they're going to try to do. And see, verses 1 and 2... He's saying this like, look, what Paul wrote, good, great, praise the Lord. But that was for that dispensation that you had the chance to be saved, but now you're in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why verses 1 and 2, okay? So we keep reading. And this we will do if God permit. For it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, fall away, Saved people fall, my dear friend from Oregon. Lost people like you, lost false converts like you, fall away. Look at this contest. Just don't look at me, pal. Okay? If they should fall away, to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Hmm. They like these people who come to Hebrews, they like verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. See, you can lose your salvation. But they always teach you can get it back. Hebrews chapter 6 tells you that you can't get it back. And how do you categorically lose your salvation for good during the time of Jacob's trouble? Oh, you take the mark of the beast. But see, when you got a sleazy believist fake gracer during the time of Jacob's trouble telling you, oh, just believe and receive. Once saved, always saved. 
Oh, then I can take the money. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're damned to hell. For the earth which drinketh in the rain and cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected. See the tie-in with the sower thing? And is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. People have come to uh, quite a bit that I've encountered will come to Hebrews 6. It's like, you can lose your salvation today. And they come to this. It's like, well, yeah, during, that's for the time of Jacob's trouble. And if this were doctrinally for today, then you would have a whole slew of contradictions and you wouldn't be able to trust the scriptures, wouldn't you? <laughs> let's keep, let's finish this. But, beloved, hmm, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, thus we speak. Though we thus speak. Let me, let's let me read that again. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, the second coming, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And Revelation chapter 12, one verse, verse 17, during the time of Jacob's trouble, for which the book of Hebrews is written for. Uh, not 17, Re Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. During the time of Jacob's trouble, verse 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman, Israel, and went to make war with her, the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 14, 12. Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. It is not by grace through faith. Okay? And, and we just read Hebrews chapter 6. Okay, now, you, you saint, brother, you're like, dude, how could someone try to use Hebrews 6 to say to someone that today you can lose your salvation? How? Very simple. Very simple. Amos, let's, I mentioned it, well, let's look at it. Amos, chapter 8, not Haggai. Amos, come on, fingers. I'm using my other set of scriptures. Amos, chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Now, like I said, during the time of Jacob's trouble, this will be at its peak fulfillment. Today, it's being fulfilled in a type by, you go to a Christian building, a phallus house, they don't even have Bibles anymore, okay, all right, and they're definitely not using the scriptures, okay? And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. For us today, verse 12, well, there is no perfect translation. A new one comes out that's better than the other one. The LSD version, uh, you know, which is MacArthur's thing, is, you know, better, is the best right now until uh, Zondervan comes out with another translation. Simple. The 
level of deception that the devils are getting away with today is extraordinary. It's it's full of wonder, isn't it? It's it, it really is. It's 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 full of wonder. How you know because you and I, saints, we we have the scriptures. We believe the scriptures. We read the scriptures, and we rightly divide the word of truth. And we look at this stuff and we read this stuff and and we're like. How could you fall for something that stupid? When your foundation is a foundation built on sand, you'll believe anything. And Christians will believe anything to just as if I themselves to merit their own salvation. That's going to be it for this little video. Look. Eternal security, once saved, always saved. This doctrine, today. For today, this dispensation. The only ever other dispensation besides eternity where eternal security is, is in the time of Jacob's trouble for 144,000 Jews. Other than that, this is the only dispensation that eternal security exists, except for what we just mentioned. And why don't you want to believe that? Well, you want to know why? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ignorance aside, if you're ignorant, that's a different thing. I'm not addressing you babes. That ought to be obvious. But if you're ignorant, a babe in Christ, okay, hopefully this has helped you. It's like, okay, I'm eternally secure. Good. Yes, you are. If you came to the Lord his way and he saved you, you are eternally secure. Yes, you are, son. Okay? But why do others who know, who are aware of the truth, but yet reject it? Mm. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. It comes from himself. For he is a liar and the father of it. Guess where we're going to next, brother? Give the time stamp, because I want to know. Because you and I have uh, pretty much uh, like mine. Where are we going next? Put the time stamp. I know where you're going. So do, you, so do I. <laughs> Isaiah 14. 12 to 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. God did not send thee to tell us not to go into Egypt, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, set a theon against us. So we're going back to Egypt anyway. <laughs> I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Oh, like Diotrephes? Hmm. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I'm not like all other men. Thank you. I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Most High. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now, if you're a babe, a novice, and you've made it through this video and watched this, hopefully what we've given you here should be it's like, okay, good. Yes, I got eternal security. Yes, you do. If you came to the Lord, his way. Okay, never mind that lying nonsense, believe and receive. Okay. 
they say that prayer is a work, repentance is a work, calling on it. No, 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 they're, they're lost. They're going to hell themselves. You don't want to believe the truth and once saved, always saved today because you haven't been broken of your self-righteousness and you want to uh, prove to everyone, especially God, that you're a good person. You haven't been broken. You ain't saved. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching if you do. Love you. Bye-bye.